Hey everybody, welcome back to the Broken Shifter Podcast, or as it should now be known, the Broken Oil Cooler Podcast. Anyways, I am here today joined by my two lovely friends, and we're going to discuss... Discuss... Okay, don't know what that was. Discuss Richmond International Raceway. I'm Caboose. What? <laughs> <laughs> That threw me off. It threw okay. him off more than it did me. <laughs> it did. <laughs> I'm Carbon. And I'm Kill him. Uh, That was just a joke for everybody. Trying to mess with Caboose. I'm actually hurting. And uh, Kill him's actually... I'm still Carbon. Caboose. And Carbon is still Carbon. But I thought it would be really up, funny Jess. to really <laughs> screw with him at the start of a podcast. And... Apparently, it screwed with carbon worse than it did Caboose. Significantly. <laughs> Significantly. <laughs> so that, that was definitely going. worth it. Wee. And uh, hopefully everybody gets a laugh out of that. Uh, anyways, we're going to start off with the biggest news of the week, and that's Dale Jr.'s retirement. Dale Jr.'s been around for uh, almost 20 years in the Cup Series. He's uh, won two Bush Series championships. Never got a Cup Series championship, but he's won some really big races, including the two Daytona 500s, which is something his dad never did. Uh, his dad did win one, and Tony Stewart never won a single one. And he's my favorite driver. I'm sad to see him go, but I think he's making a smart decision. And I would like to do know... Him. Yeah. The way I, you uh, phrased that, that would have been confusing as hell. It, well, well, yeah, I'm not sad to see Anyone Tony who's watched go. the podcast, I've never, they know. Never, never been a Tony <laughs> fan. Uh, I'm, I'm sad. I'm sad that Dale's going, but there's plenty of young talent, and uh, I am a big Chase Elliott, and I, I do like Brad Keselowski as well. But anyways, uh. What do y'all think? I feel like he's had a successful career. He's not been uh, like a Jimmy Johnson or Jeff Gordon or his dad even, but he has won some big races, and he has lived in the shadow his whole life with the death of his dad and everything, and I think he's taken it with stride, come back from four years of not winning to finally actually reinvigorate his career. Uh, yeah, it, Dale Jr., for the longest time, he's been my second favorite driver, second to Tony, and uh, I was hoping to have a few more years with Dale being the, my number one driver. Um, with me, I like having two drivers to root for in case something does happen, regardless if it's by injury or just having a bad race. I like to have someone to fall back onto. And watching Dale throughout the year, seeing how he's grown, but um, not as just a driver, but as an individual um, post his father's death, um, was real interesting. And it's going to suck to see him go, but I'm happy that he's going out on his terms and not medical terms. Justin, what do you think? Carbon. Uh, Carbon. Carbon. <laughs> Carbon justice. Whichever. Um, it's sad. I'm understanding, but it's sad because this is my first year watching, and Dale Jr. was like he's a big icon. name and everything. And I have barely gotten to see him race at all, considering I didn't start till like mid season last season, right after his concussion. And uh, so I don't know. It kind of sucks to see uh, like the biggest name, one of the biggest names in racing history uh retiring this year just after one of the other biggest names retired last year and then another big name uh, amongst yeah, others oh, yeah. the year before <laughs> yeah and then another <laughs> big been, name the same year crazy. this year we're losing yeah. a lot of the guys we've but, had for so long we're down to we've lost uh Jeff Gordon then Stewart then Edwards and now we're going to lose Junior and I think Matt Kenz is next and I would assume Jimmy Johnson will not be far after. 
I think if Jimmy Johnson gets championship eight, that's it for him. Yeah, uh, I saw a thing that said probably in the next five years, NASCAR is going to be drastically different with a lot of uh, people retiring. There's it a is. lot and of talented young guys, though. And it definitely makes mm-hmm. it harder for us, the fans of these drivers that are now retiring, to not pick someone else to take their place. With me, I'm torn between three drivers. I'm torn between Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, and Kyle Larson. All of them, phenomenal drivers. Granted, two of them, this this is only their second year, so who knows where they're going to go, but they've proven one thing, they know how to drive. And some of them in not great equipment. Um, I bumped my mic. I'm sorry about that. (laughs) I wouldn't say bad equipment. I would say... Um, I said not great. Blaney is in a Wood Brothers car that hasn't been full time in so long. It's unreal. Uh, Larson, he's in the Ganassi car, and they finally brought stout pieces. I mean, even McMurray's back up to the caliber driver he is. The big teams are the ones that have fallen behind this year. But you got Larson, Blaney, and Eric Jones. All three. Just kind of didn't have their normal run that they've been having all year at Richmond. Eric Jones cracked the wall. He he was fastest in one of the practice sessions. He was second fastest in another one, and he was near the top of the leaderboard in the other one. I don't remember where it was. And it it didn't take him hardly any laps, and he was in the wall. Yeah, so, I think it was on lap five going on to six going into three. Um, it, it he made wasn't contact very ball. Yeah, he made contact with Casey Kane's car because they were going three wide into turn three. And I think the exhaust what we're guessing, pipe cut his tire. Yeah, that's what we're guessing. Yeah, and Blaney just, it just went all downhill for him. And Larson looked strong, but... For the first time this year, it started to fall off, and uh, second, I tell you what, don't forget Martinsville. You got two teams right now that are looking good, and that's about it. Joe Gibbs is on the rise. They've apparently found something, and they're coming back strong. And Penske, Penske is probably, in my opinion, two one two finishes they've had. I mean, Hendrick, year. Hendrick's uh, not bad, but uh, we'll get on to Hendrick here in a few minutes when we go back to the Dale Jr. incident. So, first thing we'll talk about, JGR finally wins the segment. Matt Kenseth, out of all the JGR cars, uh, you would not expect Suarez to be one to win a segment first. But Denny Hamlin or Kyle Busch, you would probably expect before Matt Kenseth. But Matt Kenseth's good at Richmond, and he won segment one. And he just flat out dominated. The clean air was good. The car was good. When he got back in traffic, he was in a world of hurt. I mean, he still ran good all day. He had a great car, and I've been to Richmond so many times. It's my home track. He gets around that track so well. So is Kevin Harvick. I was really expecting Harvick to get up there and do some work, but uh, yeah. One thing I noticed is Matt Kenseth's car was a great short run car, a good mid run car, and just it fell off the face of the planet on the long run. Keselowski was catching him right. very quickly towards the end of the run. And I think that takes us to what we want to talk about in stage two which is uh, Brad. Brad came on in the middle of stage two and proved that, well, he was coming on in the middle of stage one as well, and he was just tearing through the field, and it was blatantly obvious he had the car to beat. And I was wondering if he was going to keep up with that or if he was just burning the damn tires off the car to get track position. Because Brad, I mean, I've been to Richmond a ton of times and never seen him perform like that there and he was just absolutely destroying it but brad in my opinion him and kyle bush probably are the two 
most talented veterans on the track at the moment. And uh, I, I'm not including uh, Jimmy Johnson and the likes of them. I'm just saying for people that haven't been racing forever, I'm talking like their early 30s and stuff like that. They're veterans. They're not experts. They're not rookies. They're not new guys. They're right in that middle range where they've been around for a bit, but not a whole long time. And those two guys can wheel a car like nobody else. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting seeing these, I guess, middle-aged, if you will, for this for the NASCAR realm, not actual age-wise. Um, drivers, seeing them turn into veterans, it, it's definitely going to be interesting seeing how all this works out. The real question is, is who's going to be the next Mark Martin who won't stay out of retirement or in retirement? I think the way it's going, it's going to be Matt Kenseth because he's 45 years old now and he just keeps on keeping on and he dominated the first half of the race almost at Richmond and he was still there at the end. Um, I and know Mark Carbon... Officially at what, at 55? I'm not sure. It was not early. I mean, even Dale Sr., when he passed away, he was in his 50s. And... Uh, he had he had won a race into his fifties. Grant was a restrictor plate race, but he was a restrictor plate king. Um, Carbon only saw part of the race, so that was unfortunate. Dustin, or the third stage. Um, so uh, before we talk about stage three and who won the race, we can talk about uh some uh, three and even four wide racing at Richmond, which the three wide racings happened recently at Richmond. It's kind of a new trend over the past couple of years. And uh, it made for some intense shit, some serious moments, and some bumping and grinding. And I liked it, especially near the end of the stages. Yeah, definitely a classic short track racing. There's a lot, of, or a lot of excitement, just down to that end. A lot of lead changes just in the third segment. Yeah. yeah it, was, okay. it was pretty crazy. A lot, a lot of and people running it all the way to the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it seemed like pretty much every groove was working for as long as you had your car set up in that general area. Yeah, if you had the balls to run it up against the wall and could control it, you were going to make up some ground because the outside lane was faster. I swear Keselowski was doing so well. Uh, Larson was at the beginning of the race, but he just wore his car out, which was extremely disappointing. Uh, I was really disappointed in Blaney, too, but... um, uh, we'll go with the uh, next thing. Kurt Busch has yet another mechanical issue with his... Shocker. His, uh, his cooling system getting air to the driver to keep him cool. And Caboose will tell you what the temps inside the car were at Richmond. Because I live in Virginia and it was hot as hell. Yeah, Denny Hamlin, who had a working fan system his car got as hot as 140 degrees um when it came up to about head level of the driver so it was uh it was getting warm and speaking of Denny actually time out hold on the sensor for the 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 meter that shows what it's reading as at head level the sensor's on their hip just for the rest probably a little hotter then they talked about that during the race. So, okay. yeah, it's probably a little hotter than what their head is, and they got that cooler blowing air into their helmet. But, yeah, 140 degrees in the cockpit, which 
for any normal person is absolutely ridiculous inside of a fire suit and a full face helmet. I did it in an indoor oh. air conditioned go kart track with a full face helmet and just my normal clothes, and I was sweating when I got done after eight minutes. I mean, uh, that's that's hotter than the hottest place on Earth. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. hottest nat- natural temperature on Earth. So, I mean, it's it's crazy. It's like that's one thing you don't really think about. Uh, that's like another little addition that you can say you can add on when somebody says, "Oh, NASCAR's not that hard. You just drive around the circle." Well, 140 degrees. <laughs> yeah, try, in, try in a fire uh, suit, football or baseball or basketball or something like that in 140 degree weather. Yeah, you're playing that. You got clothes <laughs> three and a half on, hours got, straight. You don't have a helmet yeah. and a full fire suit on, trapped inside mm-hmm. of a car. <laughs> yeah, and also the only time that you can drink water is during a caution. Other than that, you're just Unless relying you're really on the AC unit in the back. Well, I mean, you can get really greedy and try and reach down for it. I wouldn't recommend it, though, unless you're fucking out of the draft at Daytona or something and you can just cruise around with one hand. Yeah, or being Dale Jr. back when Emilio was working well, freaking running up front yeah, and just driving hand. one-handed. <laughs> yeah, be like, I'm don't just some of them like prop up like a little, like a water thing, like a straw, a really long straw, yeah. basically? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sometimes. they got the long straw, just they need to feed it through the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, no, I think it's a safe actually, like position it that way though. It it works better with the long straw at nighttime because they don't have to have the visor down. But uh, yeah, uh, Denny Hamlin's dashboard quit on him under caution. Mm-hmm. Hamlin's dashboard quit. He had to do a full power cycle. Danica Patrick was having electrical issues. Um. Kurt Busch, he was having the electrical issues, and there was one other driver that was having electrical issues. I can't remember who. So, and so now, somebody started smoking big time, and uh-huh. I think it was, I think it was oil or something like that, because there was a caution that was thrown out right afterwards. All right, so uh, Caboose here wanted to talk about Daniel Suarez, so I'm gonna let him have the floor for a sec. Yeah. I, I, thing about Daniel Suarez is either he's very hit or miss, and generally that theme follows throughout most of the race. Um, but this race, something interesting happened. About halfway through the race, he was two laps down. Or that or very early part of stage three, he was two laps down, and in the end he came around and finished somewhere like 12. And um, for a rookie, that that's pretty impressive. Now, granted, the cautions did help, but going from... Good equipment. Well, the equipment helps. I, I would say NASCAR now, with the reduction in downforce, I would say NASCAR is now about two thirds equipment base and then one third driver base. You still need to know how to drive yeah. to get the car to the front, but a lot of it is based upon equipment and engineering. He had you a good, good finish equipment, considering. But, yeah. yeah, but you can have good equipment, but not a good engineering team and a great driver, you'll still get a decent finish. If you can get good equipment and a great engineer, you'll get a great finish. And things of that nature, which, going back to like what we were talking about earlier, I Larson and the Wood Brothers car, I, I don't feel like they have bad equipment. Because you the mean Wood Blaney? Brothers, they have a copy and paste. Or, yeah, the Wood Brothers car, Brian Blaney, same shit. Um, That's not Larson. Running. <laughs> He's gonna see. <laughs> it's been a long day. All right. <laughs> but Ryan Blaney's car, the Wood Brothers car, is copy and paste from Penske. The only thing slowing him down is the engineering team who's figuring out the cars. And it seems like the crew chief uh, for Daniel Suarez started to figure something out when the engineers couldn't get him a car to go at the beginning. So. Yeah, it was interesting right. seeing him go from two down to about twelve. How about a uh, Ricky Stenhouse performance so far this year? I mean, he seems to it, it may be Roush Fenway starting to get something going and get back to their former glory. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse, would you say uh, fourth place? I believe fourth place. Yep. Yeah. I mean, partially. I think he's overdue luck. for a win. Yeah, 
And he at he's got a nationwide he's... championship, so uh, I trust I've got the die cast. Uh, and I like him. I love the kid, but uh, I can call him a kid because I'm older than he is. But I think he uh, <laughs> he's just uh, and he's hanging it out. He's doing everything he can. Just doesn't have the equipment but roush seems to be getting their stuff together rcr seems to be getting their stuff together some of the teams that struggled the past two or three years seem to be getting their stuff straight and that's good to see because that promotes competitive racing and that's why we're seeing the end of these stages with cars just fighting it out and it seems like stenhouse has been a popular topic here recently especially after last uh race with Stenhouse moving Kyle Busch, who was the leader, just to stay on the lead lap, which was the move of the year so far, in my opinion. Yeah. Real quick, we're running a little close on time. Okay. Good. Well, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, get close to wrapping up. Uh, Justin, first, you want there to say is one, one more thing. I know you want to. You haven't mentioned. Uh, junior yet and i think this will be a good way to segue into that uh ryan newman his pit strategy that he went with along with junior right behind him i i really found that one interesting uh how he kind of risked it and stayed out and banking on a caution yeah unfortunately you know the caution ended up being jimmy at his expense yeah his spot or something i don't know somebody screwed up didn't know Junior was there, or did know Junior was there. So I don't know what should happen exactly. But anyways, it was a cluster. Took out Junior. It wasn't pretty. And uh, caused a caution, and that got Newman up there. Uh, really risky thing to do, but paid off really well. Paid off for Newman. Uh, hurt Junior real bad, and I'm not Jimmy. sure what happened there. Um, no, Jimmy still finished eleventh. Uh, he got mm. caught up in it a little bit. He didn't get that much damage. Nah, but he just absolutely drilled Junior. I say he didn't get a lot of damage, but he yeah, he hit him hard. Uh, I mean, that's the kind of mistake you can't make in racing, and it, that's got to go to the spotter. Either that or a radio malfunction, and if there's no radio malfunction, that goes 100% on the spotter's shoulders because... That was absolutely I'd... ridiculous. I know that's how you run the track. I understand the track. I've been there so many times. You come off of that turn. You go from the low line straight up against the wall. Junior was there. Yes, Junior got a little bit loose coming off the turn. He was still up against the wall. He had nowhere to go. He did not come down or anything like that for all the Junior haters that may watch this or listen to it. I think... I think Junior, I don't think Jimmy anticipated Junior. I think he saw him probably and did not Thought anticipate he was gonna Junior blow by to be moving as fast as he did because he was just sitting right along that wall all the way around the entire turn. And, yeah, I think Jimmy thought he could squeeze through before the uh, before yeah. Junior came up there. and there he, was just he just railroaded him. A big mix up. There, there's, I don't think there's anything. Jimmy's come out blatantly and said, I just ran him slammed him right into the wall and juniors you know part of the reason he's retiring is because of these wrecks and stuff and granted that's not a hard hit on tv in real life if you're doing 130 140 that's a hard hit accelerating yeah i mean it's not like jimmy never let off <laughs> right like he was just gunning it and that was it and you get hit Put in down. the driver's side door I mean, it, it's not fun. It The damage on the cars didn't show how hard the hit actually was. And then, of course, Junior spun out a couple of laps later after trying to repair damage, which he had no rear sway bar at that point, so I'm not surprised in the least. And he had a tire rub. But let's go ahead and uh, try and wrap this up. And uh, I think we've discussed Richmond enough. It was a uh, good stage racing. Uh, oh, wait. We missed one key part right here. I was saying. Yeah, Joey, that's kind of a major thing we missed. <laughs> yeah, Joe Elegano won the race. Uh, 
Very Penske good pit with a one, stop. Two finish. Penske with the one-two finish, which made me happy because I actually like Logano and Keselowski. Uh, I would Where did rather he come s- from? I, uh, Logano <laughs> like, crept his way through the whole goddamn race. It was like third stage when I started watching. Logano wasn't even in the freaking mix, and all of a sudden he's right there in the last yeah. couple minutes. It was, couple it was a, them damn pit stops, man. Just, and uh, Brad definitely had the best car of the day. Uh, nobody was even close to Brad, and uh, I was thinking Harvick would have been the car to beat. But as many times as I've been to Richmond, Harvick's always been up there. Kenza's been up there, and I was not expecting Brad to be so fast. And then Logano out of nowhere, I I looked up and he was second, and I was like, "What the hell's going on?" Next thing you know, he's leading, and I'm like, "I'm rooting for Brad," but. I don't mind Logano. If, as long as it's not JGR, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Kyle Busch got sent to the oh, back for yeah. speeding. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We didn't even speak about that. We'll just touch on that real quick. Uh, pit road penalties continue to plague drivers. Uh, Dale Jr., Kyle Busch, numerous other drivers. Uh, whether it's too many men over the wall, whether it's going through too many pit boxes, whether it's speeding in a certain box or whatever it, the, control, these drivers are just out of control it doesn't matter it's uh, leaving the pit box with equipment it doesn't matter there's an insane amount of pit road penalties going on this year and it's just absolutely insane uh and i think it's because they're in a rush if y'all want to touch on that real quick Please feel free, Justin, you can start first with that, and then Caboose do that, and then we'll carry on to uh, – we all know Logano won the race. Uh, not much to say there, and we'll make our picks for Talladega. Okay. Well, they uh, they increased the number of cameras, didn't they? Yeah, oh, they yeah. got uh, more sensors explosion. or whatever to yeah. check in. Yeah, those – I think that's the biggest reason, honestly. Like, they're getting caught a lot more than they used to in the past. Right. Well, speeding's only been an issue for about 20 years now. <laughs> I mean, in the 90s, <laughs> the early 90s, there was no pit road speed. You can come in at 120 miles an hour. And they would. But mm-hmm. danger to Caldega, cruise come was in. the problem. <laughs> if you could get down on the apron and keep it straight, you were allowed to come in that fast. Mm-hmm. You just have a slow pit stop because they didn't have the crews they got nowadays. So. But today, it's safety. I think they need to. Uh, I think they need to eliminate some of the um, segments on the pit road for speeding. Like, I mean, is it, Richmond's a small pit road, and they got fifteen segments or something like that. If I can make it like seven or eight, there's no need for that yeah, many segments. You got to find that balance between safety and. Um, allowing the driver the to be fans, able to it's not fun for the fans either to be like oh he's yeah. bad now he's back to the back right I mean just let them maintain an average speed over it and they're like well the driver should just you know drive that same exact speed but you think about it if they park in their pit stall you know halfway through they can fucking fly out of their pit stall it should be to me if you break say at Richmond, 45 miles an hour, If you or 40, whatever the pit road speed is there. If you break that speed and they clock you above that speed, that's when you get penalized. That, yep, that should be how it is. Instead, let's make it complicated. Let's make it, let's make it speeding like in real life, you know? When a police officer pulls me over for doing 65 and a 55, he's not clocking me over a distance. He's clocking me at the exact speed he sees me when I come by him. You know, do it that way. Yep. That's a fucking simple fix. But then again, Alrighty. I guess they can't monitor every car the whole way down pit road, so that'd be chaos. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little little too much technology going on there. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna do a little roll reversal here and let Caboose go first on his picks for Talladega. So my main pick is an obvious pick. I'm gonna go with LG. He knows what he's doing, and Daytona showed that he still has it for the plate tracks. Um, A dark horse, 
although I don't think he'll get the win, I think he'll finish very, very well, Michael McDowell. Another car that at Daytona showed that they got speed when it comes to racing in a pack. And hopefully that luck stays on his side that was at Daytona because he managed to narrowly not get caught up in about four or five wrecks. Yeah, I so, one of those lines. Like I said, I don't know if he'll get the win, but I'm banking on him Caboose. finishing very well. <laughs> And for We're anybody, keep picking Dale till he wins. <laughs> and for anybody that's watching this podcast or listening to it, uh, just for the record, uh, we uh, it's, play Grand Theft it's Auto two in the with the guys from oh. the uh, from the '95 team every uh, Tuesday, and uh, they're great guys. It's such a great team, and they're humble to the fans and everything like that. You should really. Follow them on Twitter, whatever, and uh, root for the guys because they're it's hard the working. Road crew show. Yeah, it's the road crew show. Uh, give them a shout out, and definitely, definitely some great guys working on that team. Super nice, really funny guys. Um, Justin, your pick and your dark horse, Carbon. I just want to say, are they paying us? <laughs> <laughs> Advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the 30 cents that they got over the last two months of videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. No, um, my picks. Uh, well, after watching Daytona, I know that it literally could be anyone. <laughs> like the, the amount of last second changes where everybody was just dying off from gas, uh, running out of fuel at the end of Daytona was insane. But I am going to go with Truex. I think he's going to get a second win. And my dark horse, I'm going to go with Trevor Bain. He's been, last two races, I know for sure, he's been up in like the top 15, top 10, somewhere in that area, uh, doing pretty good. So. Okay. Interesting. Trevor Bain has a uh, Daytona win. Uh, the only win of his career in the Cup Series was in the 21 car, actually, in Daytona 500. Um all right, I guess I'll take over from here, and it will be... It's time to be the sister track. My, um, my pick is going to be none other than the one and only Dale Earnhardt Jr., along with Caboose. And my dark horse is going to be Jamie McMurray. I think that should be considered a dark horse, yeah. Uh, it, That's why I people, my dark some, horse last time. So. <laughs> some will argue, but <laughs> some will not. It's been a long time since he's won a race. He's got to be a dark mm -hmm. horse. <laughs> I consider a dark horse basically anyone who hasn't been good recently, like within the well, last it's not that, year or so. He, he's been good, but he hasn't been... He's not won. He hasn't won yet. He's yeah. He's, yeah, he's not expected to win. Like I mean, Chase know, Elliott wouldn't or, really be a dark horse Truex because or Bush or Chase Elliott like, like started the year with so many top fives and shit. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Jamie McMurray because I know he's a really good plate racer. So I'm going with Junior and uh, McMurray. And uh, any closing comments from either of you? Nope. Uh, I'm excited for the racing. I the can't wait. Oh, I can't even wait. No, I don't like to play tracks with this new segment system, but whatever. That's, I a, just, that's a story for next week. Yeah. A discussion for next week. <laughs> I just remembered something. Hopefully we won't see Logano racing around with a jack underneath his car again. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the wrench issue? Like somebody uh, sent me a yeah. video of? Uh, don't, yeah, that don't was leave awesome. the track bar wrench. In. Somebody had a, was it Stewart had a? Uh, yeah, I think it was track bar left on. The track bar or last year. Uh, wedge somebody alright well this has been fun as hell hope everybody enjoys it if you got any comments please leave them below in the comment section if you enjoyed it please like it and subscribe and we are on a roll now with getting these out every week so we would love to have you come listen and watch whatever the fuck Caboose decides to post us for video. So, having said that, this has been the Broken Shifter Podcast. I am Caboose. 
I am Carbon. And I'm Herded. Very nice. Good night, everybody. <laughs>